And the text comes from Psalm 1, 15, verse 15, and it reads, You are blessed of the Lord, which made heaven and earth. Remember, the Bible is the inspired word of God. And so Jesus says in the book of Mark, he says, What I say to one, I say to all. And so when God was speaking to the Jews, even though at that time he was speaking specifically to the Jews, he had you and I in mind. And so when he says that you are blessed of the Lord, that is God's will and plan and purpose. You are blessed of the Lord, which made heaven and earth. But to be blessed, there is a condition. But you are blessed. So at the time he's speaking, He's talking to a people who are faithfully serving the Lord. And he makes known that you are blessed of the Lord, which made heaven and earth. Now, the first thing the Lord did after the creation of mankind was to bless them. Genesis chapter 1, verses 27 to 28 tells us that God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female. He created them. And then he blessed them. So God created two holy people. Remember I said blessings are conditional. God's goodness is separate and distinct from being blessed. He sends the rain upon the just and the unjust. His goodness to the ungodly is to lead them to repentance. So God uses goodness as a tool or as a means of evangelism to get those who don't know him to come to him so that they would recognize, look, I've been serving all these dumb idols. I've been living my life how I want to live it. And much wasn't happening. But the moment I begin to hear about this Jesus and think about him, he's been good to me. And so it causes people to want to serve a good God. Especially sometimes there are people who aren't saved and they have a, a child that is really sick. And they come to the church for prayer, and God, he's that child. Now they get saved, and that entire family becomes members of the house of God. But when God made the man and the woman in the Garden of Eden, God blessed them. And so when God blessed mankind, when he pronounced his blessing upon mankind, he marked them as being under his special protection. So when you are blessed of God, it means you come under God's protection. That's why the psalmist says in Psalm 91, He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Because once you are abiding under God's shadow or his feathers, which is typology of God's protection. Some Psalms may say the canopy of God or um, in the tabernacle of the Lord. All of those are words that simply means that you are under God's divine protection. When you are living holy and you're under God's divine protection, there's nothing that Satan can do to you. He literally can't come up and say, well, I'm going to burn down your house or I'm going to affect your marriage. He can't do anything to you. God has to give him permission like he did with Job. So when God blessed Adam and Eve, they were marked as under God's divine protection. When he blessed them, he wished them well both for time and eternity. So the blessing was to be an eternal blessing. Now when God wished them well, it meant that he wanted them to succeed in having dominion over the earth. Because there were God's children and he had planted a garden and put them in it. So when he blessed them, he wished them well. I want you to succeed in time and in eternity. In day and night, night and day, I want you to succeed. And so it is with us when God bless us, he wants us to have dominion wherever we are. And one of the places in which the church really needs to function in dominion is on the job. You see, just like Daniel worked for the king of Babylon, and he was working in a demonic society, in a demonic nation. And every time you look around, you can see that those who worship the various gods were coming together and they were conspiring. How not only to get him off the job, but to have his life ended in the earth. 
We see the same thing with the Hebrew boys. We see the same thing with Mordecai and Persia. The same thing. There's nothing new under the sun. This is what is, what is happening in the job sector. And so when you know God, he has blessed you and he wants you to succeed in having your dominion authority on the job. How do you have dominion authority? By taking authority over the spirits that you recognize either by name or nature on the job. So when you know Miss so-and-so in three cubicles are, is miserable, and that is what she ministers on a daily basis, you take authority over it. And you take authority over it in prayer. I, I worked before I became a full-time minister, so I know what it is like to have to take authority. Before I go to sleep, I took authority. When I got up at 5 a.m., I took authority because it was the same thing every day. And the agenda of the enemy was to get me fired because he knew if I got fired, then obviously um, financially, you know, how things would be. So then you would find yourself now in need. And if you don't have the faith to trust God, you're going to sin to make up the lack. There's always a man out there. Satan always has a man out there that has a $100 bill, you know, just waving it in your face to tell you, I love you and I'm going to help you. And that always short circuit your purpose and your destiny. So we are to have dominion in the earth. We are not just to walk casually, but you are to walk and make a song as you walk in the realm of the spirit that demons and devils will know that you have dominion. So dominion didn't cease when Adam and Eve came out of the garden. It still belonged to man. And that's what Jesus regained for us at Calvary. Life and death is in the power of the town. And we can kill things or bring things to naught by what we speak. And we can cause things to live or, or energize it or, or give, it, give it more power by the things that we speak. And so when you recognize what is happening on the job, because the job is Satan's kingdom. That's one of the kingdoms he, he, he owns or he rules in. And he uses it to intimidate Christians and to cause them to compromise. So he raises the pressure. If you don't do this, you're going to be fired. And then you get all of these write-ups. And the write-ups are supposed to intimidate you. But when you are holy and righteous, the devil can only go that far and no further. You stand your ground. And you keep your faith in God. In the end it will be just like the Lord said it would be. And so he blessed them. And he wished them well. Because he really wanted them to succeed. In having dominion in the entire earth. He blessed them with all the blessings of nature. In other words, he blessed them with the benefit of the sun. When God created this physical earth, there was a need for the sun. The sun didn't come after the fall. The sun was there before the fall. He blessed them also with rain. They needed sun and they needed rain. He blessed them with clean air, not what we breathe in, with all the gases. He blessed them with the beauty of this physical landscape, which include the trees and the, and the plants and the animals and birds and rivers and seas with the oceans in them. Some of you like nature. And some people like to take hikes in the wood and, and, and they become so fascinated with trees. Oh, this tree is 500 years old. And some people are into botany, the exotic plants and the rare this and the rare, that, that kind of stuff. Some people are into animals, the deer, the leopard, the this. Some people are into the whale and the dolphin and the flipper. I am not into none of that. It doesn't, you know, that don't, you know. Um, that this weekend, my son surprised me for Mother's Day. And he said, do you want to go to the museum? I said, two things are my, are my favorites, the mall and the bank. Those things make me happy. The Mona Lisa don't impress me. But when God gave, bless Adam, 
He blessed him with the beauty of nature, everything, all the fruits uh, and the vegetables. He blessed him with nature. It was important that these two human beings who were vegetarians at the time enjoyed the beauty of the physical landscape that God had given to them. So you can imagine him and his wife taking walks in the garden, and they walk a little further to them. They say, well, this is a new thing. What are we going to call these roses and daffodils and sunflowers? And they're enjoying the beauty of, the nat of nature, and God still wants us to enjoy it if we wouldn't do anything to destroy it. And so when he blessed man, he blessed man with his care. I am responsible for taking care of you. So let's say something had gone wrong in a perfect world with nature. All Adam had to do was tell it to Jesus, and he would have fixed it. Because he says, I'm responsible for taking care of everything pertaining to you. He blessed them with all the good things in life. Whatever was good in Eden, because when God created everything, he said it was good. So everything God gave Adam was good. The lion was good. The bear was good. The tiger was good. The zebra was good. Every animal that is now seemingly ferocious or, or, or any, uh, any fish in the sea, the stingray, that if it stings you, it would kill you. All of that was good. Are you hearing me? So he blessed him with everything that is good in life. And this is what God wants to do for us. He wants to bless us with everything that is good. Sometimes we get hooked on the millionaire status and being a millionaire. And we fail to see the everyday goodness that God has given to us. Are you hearing me? Because sometimes you might have brought to work an egg sandwich and somebody goes out and buy you one of those $7 ones that has turkey and ham and, and avocado and onion and all of that. God wants to bless you with the good things in life. Sometimes we start out with a cheap wig, a synthetic wig, and then somebody gives us one with human here. God wants to bless us with the good things in life. We are living in a more advanced and technological world. God wants to bless us with the good things in life. You might be driving an old car. God wants to bless us with the good things in life. Some people have not been able to change their wardrobe in a long time, but when God bless you, he wants to give you the good things in life. He wants to give you good friends. If the family is estranged, God wants to fix it because God made family in Eden. The man and his wife became a family and were told to have children. So everything in life that is good, God wants you to have and that is why a blessing is very important. He also blessed them with his presence and with communion with himself, which is what we have. You have the Holy Spirit living on the inside of you. That's the presence of God. And by virtue of the fact that you are a Christian, you have the same communion with God that Adam and Eve had with him. The difference between them and us is they had a pure, sinless body, and they were able to see God with their physical eyes. But even though we don't see God with our physical eyes, the quality of relationship is still the same. Because God breathed the Holy Spirit into Adam, so he was spirit-filled. You and I are spirit-filled. We can say right here, the moment you say, Father, his ears are inclined. Wherever you go, God is. The Bible tells us that God will leave. You know, and he would go back to heaven, and he will come in the cool of the day, and he will talk to Adam. So that, that tells me between um, morning, you know, to evening, there, there was no physical presence of God. They were just there together. Then he came for however long he came, and when he went back home, they were alone night time. Now, we have God with us 24 hours a day. For whatever we need, God is present. And so when God blesses us, his presence is with us, and we can have communion with him. When, when I say communion, what am I talking about? I'm talking about conversation. You can talk to God at your desk while you're keying in stuff. 
you can talk to God on the train wherever you are because his presence is with you and now you can talk to God you have communion and so when he blessed them he blessed them with his presence and with communion with himself the beautiful thing about being a Pentecostal Christian is that you have access to God for yourself it's not like the Catholic you have to go to the father oh father I have sinned, and whatever the Father chooses to do for you, he'll do for you. He promises absolution. No man has the power to forgive sin. And so some people, they have to wait on the priest to come to get them into heaven. Let's say for, for some reason a person was unsaved, and the doctor says, you're going to die in 10 minutes, and, and, and the, the pastor or whoever is an hour and 30 minutes away, you, you don't have to die in your sins. You can call on God there and then, and he will hear and he will answer because his name is El Elyon. He's a possessor of all things. He lives and dwells within and among mankind. Some people don't recognize it, but God is present because he's in charge. Now, when God blessed Adam and Eve, this blessing was not temporal. It was eternal because it was the last throughout their existence. And so when God blesses you, He's not blessing you this Sunday, and some people miss it. Sometimes you go to church, and the pastor calls you out, and he gives you a prophetic word. He says, I hear the Lord saying he's going to take care of all that troubles you. And at that moment, let's say one of your children was acting up. Now, that's a blessing that the Lord just pronounced upon your life. Some people tend to think that that word that the Lord just said only pertains to my son acting up. No, that's an everlasting blessing upon your life. So six months down the line, when your neighbor is giving you trouble, you say, God, you said to me, you're going to take care of what is troubling me. And so when God speaks a word to you, it's not only for here and now, it's timeless. And every, for every situation, whatever it is, if you have a dog problem, the dog is said, God, you said, you'll take care of what is trouble, whatever it is. If the boss is messing up and you're getting to work late, God, you said, you will take care of whatever is troubling me. Why? When he pronounced a blessing upon us, it is the last until we see him in glory. The only thing that makes that blessing ineffective is when we turn away from God, when we break the covenant and says, I'm going over here to this God, whether it's the God of you, the God of the world, or the enemy. But as long as you stay in God, the blessing that he pronounces upon your life will remain with you until you see him in glory. You see, it was God's original design for the blessing to remain because when he created Adam and Eve, they were flawless, they were sinless, and they were to live eternally and to obey and serve him wholeheartedly. So when God pronounced the blessing was because these two people were to remain in the same physical and spiritual condition that they were created with. When God blessed them, he also gave them the earth and its produce as their inheritance. So he blessed them, and then he gave them an inheritance. He blessed them, and he says, I'm going to always be here for you. I want you to succeed in having the dominion, the authority that I give to you, and now I give you all of this. So this whole planet Earth, America, England, Australia, every continent, every island, all the seas, the oceans, every rivers, God gave to two people and said, this is yours. You're going to multiply and you're going to fill up all of this with, with human beings that you would produce. And so if there had stayed, I mean, it has still happened, but if there had stayed in that holy estate, this whole entire earth would be populated as it is now, but we would not be waiting for the rapture and Jesus would not be the lamb that was slain, we would have been all holy people. So God gave them an inheritance. In other words, after he pronounced his blessing upon them, he gave them the earth as their possession. That's why 
when it comes to spiritual warfare, you have the legal right to kick demons and devils out of this physical earth. It does not belong to them. It belongs to man. And so demons are squatters. They are illegal agents operating in the earth. When they were cast out, they were cast out into the second heaven. And so when you are walking in that dominion authority, God told them to have dominion, and you see the enemy operating in your space on planet earth, you have the right to tell them to leave in the name of Jesus. Jesus says, you shall cast out demons in my name. You cast them out and you said you've got to leave and they have to obey because from the beginning, this was the earth was given to mankind. A blessing always causes things or the invisible to come into existence. Once your life is blessed, your substance is going to prove it. So when a blessing is upon your life, it is going to make the invisible becomes visible. To be blessed is to be enriched and to be fertile in all that pertains to life and godliness. And so the word enriched means you're already blessed like Solomon was. But then God says, I'm going to give you more. And so we are already blessed as believers. But now we are looking for the enriched part, the, the excessive abundance. Enriched means to add to. So we are looking to God to add more to what we already have because that is what a blessing does. It enriches our lives. Amen? Amen. This divine principle was emulated by Jewish parents who blessed their children and also provided an inheritance for them. The Bible talks about the right of the firstborn or inheritance in Deuteronomy 21, verses 15 to 18, which says, If a man has two wives, and he loves one, but not the other, and both bear him sons, but the firstborn is the son of the wife he does not love, then on the day he assigns his possessions as an inheritance to his son, he must not give the right of the firstborn to the son of the wife he loves, in preference to his actual firstborn, the son of the wife he does not love, but he shall acknowledge the firstborn, the son of the unloved, by giving him a double portion of all that he has, for he is the first fruits of his strength, the right of the firstborn is his. And so the Bible endorses the blessing that, and also an inheritance that accompanies the blessing, that's why the Bible says a good man leaves an inheritance for his children in Proverbs 13, 22. Actually, it's King Solomon who said that. And he would know because his father did leave him something great. In Job 42, verse 15, it says, In all the land were no women found so fear as the daughters of Job, and their father gave them inheritance among their brothers. So you see the Bible endorses blessing and inheritance because God started it and we are supposed to emulate exactly what God does. Now there's a difference between a blessing and a birthright, which is the same as an inheritance. There's a difference between having a blessing on your life and getting an inheritance. In Genesis chapter 25, verses 31, Jacob said to Esau, sell me this day thy birthright. And he did. Now the father Isaac had prepared the inheritance or birthright blessing for the firstborn son, as the word of the Lord says. But a birthright was an honor given to the firstborn son bestowing head of household status and the right to inherit his father's estate. The son with the birthright would receive a double portion of whatever was passed down, money, jewelry, livestock, land. So the birthright blessing, or rather the birthright inheritance, was Esau's own. 
Now, it sounds good that he would have the honor of being head of household, so he would now be in charge, and he would get a double portion of everything his father had. But there was more to the birthright than we know. The reason why Esau didn't mind selling the birthright was because it came with the responsibility of taking care of his entire household and clan in every capacity. So when you got the, the birthright, remember in those days, it was a whole clan, um, a father, his 10 sons, and their wives, and the grandmother, and the great-grandmother. You know how they used to travel with ca caravans, that kind of stuff. It was not like he and his wife and children in one house. So he had to take care of, let's say, all of you. So that was a part of it. You're going to be the head of our soul. You're going to get a double portion. The estate is yours. But now he's responsible for all of you. Just, just picture him being, um, you know, having to take care of 70 or 80 people or so. It was his major responsibility was that of being the priest of the family. So it meant that he had to teach the word and reinforce all of God's command to his household and clan. So now you have the honor of being the head of 70 people, but you've got to see that these 70 people walk with God. You have to be their spiritual priest. You have to pray over their problems. You have to take care of everything. Now that's a great responsibility when you have to make sure that there's no sin in the camp. You see what a can sin cause. So now Esau is responsible for this. He was also responsible to protect and defend his household in times of war. So you're traveling and, you know, a fierce tribe come after you and they want to wipe out your family or you have to be the head. You have to go forward like Deborah and begin to wage this war because you've got to protect your family. And as you're traveling, you have to make sure that there are no wild beasts that would attack them and no pitfalls and all of this kind of stuff. So it was a great, great, great responsibility that Esau had. He had to be a good steward of the family finances so that it would be available for whatever was needed and whoever needed help. So he couldn't say, well, my father died and left me $7.5 million, that's my money. I am going to treat myself to, you know, a dozen new horses and stuff like that. No, he has to consider the needs of everybody and to make sure that there was finances there to take care of whatever was needed. In addition to that, he also had to provide all that was needed to be eaten as well as saying to it that his entire household was physically healthy. So the birthright, the inheritance, he wasn't too moved by that because that came with a lot of responsibility at that time. In these days when you get an inheritance, it is yours. You don't have to look after your sister. You don't have to look after your seventh cousin removed. That has nothing to do with you. But back in those days, he had all that responsibility. And while as Christians, we have a right and a duty to tell people about Christ, it isn't that burden that we would carry. Like I have to make sure that Judah is still praying to Yahweh, and I have to make sure that Dan is still serving the Lord. No, you, didn't, you, you don't have to do that, but that is exactly what Esau was responsible for. All Esau wanted was the blessing because the blessing was for him personally and entail lasting prosperity and honor. You see, in life, you can make it without an inheritance. My parents never had an inheritance, but they came along and they made life. I never got an inheritance and I came along and you work and you get what you want. But the blessing is the most important thing. When a blessing is upon your life, it does a great deal for an individual. Because Esau knew 
if he had the blessing and no birthright, he would still be set for life. That's why he cried for it and not the birthright. Because when he came in with the food to his father, and the father asked the question, now Esau is in trouble. So Genesis 27, verse 30 to 30, it says, Esau made the savory food and brought it to his father and said to his father, Arise and eat of your son's game that your soul may bless me. And his father Isaac said to him, Who are you? So he said, I'm your son, your firstborn Esau. Then Esau trembled exceedingly and said, Who? Where is the one who hunted game and brought it to me? I ate of it before you came, and I have blessed him. And indeed, he is blessed. When Esau heard the words of his father, he cried with an exceeding great and bitter cry and said to his father, Bless me also, O oh my father. Remember, he didn't cry for the birthright. Because that is a lot of work, but I want this blessing. Have you not reserved a blessing for me? Have you only one blessing, my father? Bless me, please, also, O oh my father. And Esau lifted up his voice, and he wept. Not only that, Esau knew that in one way or another, you can lose all your wealth, but a blessing will stay with you for life. A blessing could be given regardless of birthright. However, a greater blessing was given to the one who held the birthright. In the times of the patriarchs, such blessings acted as a last will and testament and were highly prized as a means of revealing God's will. So Esau is realizing, I'm not getting anything. And even though the father prayed for him, what he got was nothing in comparison to what was pronounced over Jacob's life. Because the blessing was a last will and testament. Just that like you would write a will and you say, I'm going to leave my summer house and my Manhattan apartment for my son and the two Mercedes and my stocks and shares. And you're giving the, that, that son, you know, the, greater, the greatest part of what you have accomplished in life. And then you say, well, for my three daughters, I'm going to leave each of them 50000 And for my two last sons, I'm going to leave 25000 for them. But the boy got the greater blessing. And so when Isaac would have blessed Jacob, thinking it was, Isaac, I mean, thinking it was Esau, he would have poured out of his spirit all the abundance of everything he wanted to give his son. He would have made Esau the head and not the tail. He would have blessed him with millions and billions. He would have blessed him with long life and health. He would have blessed him and declared that his enemies would be his footstool and they would never be able to triumph over him. He would have blessed him with favor beyond favor. Every good thing that he could think of or imagine, he would have poured it out on Esau, but that came upon Jacob. I know there's nothing, nothing really. He did pray for, for Esau, but it was nothing in comparison because once you release that first blessing, it is not as if you can repeat it again. So what he had for Jacob, Esau got. And what he had for Esau, Jacob got. He got the blessing. My time is up. I'll have to finish it up next week. But what God is saying to us, many of us are killing ourselves to try to get what we call blessings. And they're really not blessings. We are working ourselves to death. Not that there's not anything wrong with working and getting things in life. It's the attitude. You know, people work yourself to high blood pressure to say, I'm blessed with a BMW. No, it's, it's like some medications, it's going to heal this, but it's going to kill that. You know, that kind of stuff. And what it's going to kill, you need in your body. And so God wants us to know the importance of a blessing. The importance of pursuing God and saying, bless me indeed like Jabez and enlarge my territory. It is very necessary that Christians be blessed 
and know that they are blessed. Amen. Stand with me, please. Father, today in the name of Jesus, your word tells us that we are blessed by the God who made heaven and earth. Sometimes when we look at preachers on television, they make blessings seem so elite. Like only certain people can be blessed. Only certain people, you know, can wear this kind of suit and, you know, write with a mark, mark planted pen. They try to make it look like Poor people are not blessed by God, that we are the, the strugglers and the stragglers. That is not the God we serve. And so the God that blessed man and woman in the Garden of Eden, and that blessing that God pronounced on Adam and Eve was to come down upon their descendant is available to you today. Are you hearing me by the spirit of the living God? We are not Jew or Gentile. We are the descendants of Adam. Two people. Eve was called the mother of all living. You and I were in the loins of Eve. That, that, that is a terminology that says life come out of life, come out of life, come out of life, come out of life. But man's existence began with Adam and Eve. And when God blessed them and told them to have dominion, you and I were already thought of because we were bound up in Adam's loins and in Eve's womb. And so that blessing belongs to you today. I want you to get it. I want you to get it in the sense where you understood that your parents were blessed. And the one who blessed your parents that you serve expected what he blessed your parents with was to come down to you. And if you don't know that, then you are not going to have it. Are you hearing me by the spirit of the living God? And so God wants that blessing that he pronounced on Adam and Eve to be on you today, that favor, that goodness. He blessed them with all that pertains to life and godliness is yours. We are not strugglers. We are not welfare recipients. We are not poor. We are not underprivileged. We are the children of the two richest people that has ever lived. There will never be anyone in the earth as rich as Adam and Eve because everything that is in the earth God gave to them all the minerals that are used to make cars and planes uh, all the trees that, 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 that is cut down and the wood make home all the concrete everything is in the earth as knowledge increase what is needed must come out of the earth all the uranium the gold the silver the pearls all that every animal that is in the earth God gave all of that to our parents when he blessed them and so that blessing is still in effect today. And so, Father, we claim it now. We claim it now in the name of Jesus. You don't have to pay $1,000 to get it. You don't have to send $130.90 to get it as they play with numbers. You don't have to get water from the River Jordan uh, and magic oil and socks and soap and, and prescription prey and all that kind of nonsense. We are the descendants, just like we say, we are spiritual descendants of Abraham and the blessings of Abraham are ours. We are going back like they do in the Bible to the genealogy of the first two people that we are related related to and whatever our parents were blessed with we receive the blessing now in the name of Jesus Christ uh, we receive the well wishes of God we receive the goodness of God we receive the press down uh, and the shaken together and the running over we receive the mark of God upon our lives that says that we are under the protection of God we receive the care of God uh, we receive fellowship uh, and communion with God uh, as we dwell in his presence. Uh, everything uh, that God blessed Adam and Eve with, everything as he enriched their lives. God gave them everything in the earth and then, then he enriched it by adding more to it. Uh, and so today I decree and declare that our, our lives are enriched. God has made a promise. 
He's not going to take it back. He's not going to alter it. My people perish because of a lack of knowledge. And we are walking around thinking that we are poor and broke. God's blessing is not reserved for, for mega preachers and tele preachers and TBN and word network preachers who live in mansions by plundering the body of Christ. God's blessing is universal. It is without prejudice and partiality. God intends to bless and I decree and declare that the blessing that God spoke upon our parents is in effect right now upon our lives in the name of Jesus Christ we receive it we own it we claim it and we expect to see the invisible become visible in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever your needs are, whatever your needs are, Father, release your blessings. Father, release your blessings. Father, release your blessings. Father, speak your blessings upon the lives of your people. Man does not have the power to bless. Only God can bless. Only God can bless. And so, Father, bless your people now. Father, bless your people now. Father, bless your people now. In the name of Jesus Christ, bless your people now. We receive it. We receive it. We receive it. We are not second-class citizens. Whatever you need, you are blessed. And you can hold God to it. You can hold God to it. He wants us to prosper and be in good health as our souls prosper. And so God releases his blessing upon you. He releases his favor. He releases his goodness. Hallelujah. He releases the blessing. Uh, if you never get an inheritance uh, and you have a blessing, uh, you're going to make it. Uh, if your husband, when he divorced you, didn't give you anything, uh, you're blessed. Uh, if your parents died without anything, you're blessed. Uh, and once you realize you are blessed, uh, he will not with all anything good uh, from them that walk uprightly. I want you to receive it. Uh, I'm not playing with your emotions. Uh, I'm not playing with your mind. Uh, I'm not playing with you. Uh, once you are a child of God, uh, you are blessed. You are blessed. Uh, I receive my blessing. Uh, this is my father's earth. Uh, I will dwell in it wherever he has put me. Uh, I receive every good thing uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, I receive every good thing. Uh, when he blessed Adam and Eve, uh, he marked them as being under his special protection. Uh, he wished them well. Uh, both for time and eternity. Uh, he blessed them with nature, with care, with all the good things of life, uh, with his presence and communion. He blessed them and he enriched them uh, and he caused them to be fertile in all that pertains to life and godliness. You are blessed. Have dominion wherever you are. You are blessed. Don't let nobody treat you as if you are dirt. You are blessed. You are blessed, you are blessed, you are blessed. Each of us walk a different path in life, uh, but we are blessed, uh, we are blessed. Uh, what you didn't get when you were younger, expect God to do it for you now. Uh, when Naomi thought that all was lost uh, in her old age, uh, God gave her the blessing of the Redeemer Kingsman through her daughter-in-law, and her life was set. She had joy and peace. I thank you now, God, for blessing. And I thank you for turning things around. Uh, even the prayer requests uh, in this basket. Uh, I thank you, God, in the name uh, of Jesus Christ. Uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, God, I bring it under the blessing. That which you have blessed, uh, no man can curse. Uh, in the name of Jesus Christ, uh, bless the offering. Uh, Bless the gifts of your people, God, 
increase us, uh, enrich our lives, uh, add to us, uh, increase our monies, uh, increase our material possessions, uh, give us good places to live in, uh, give us good transportation, uh, give us good food to eat, uh, give us good clothes to wear, give us good friends, uh, cause our families to become good family. If they are not, uh, give us good governments uh, and people that have compassion that will deal with our circumstances with love. Father, bless us only you can. For you are God and there's none beside thee. I commit your people into your hands and I call them blessed because you have blessed them. I'm receiving my blessing too. I'm human just like you with knees just like you. And all that God pronounced uh, on Adam and Eve, they were marked for his protection. I receive it. No violence, no danger, no expulsion, no deportation, no eviction, uh, no harm. Uh, I am marked by God. If he marked Cain uh, for protection who killed his brother, how much more so you and I today, we are marked by God for protection.